man named Murat was one of the many young rebels fighting the Russian army, but his mother is one of a kind. Yeah, Ryan Chilcoat now tells us of the relentless mission she started nearly six years ago. February the 2nd, 2000. Nothing could have prepared me for what I saw when a group of Chechen rebels who had just walked through a minefield surrendered to Russian forces, or the conversation I would overhear between a wounded rebel prisoner and a Russian general. The general was angry the prisoner was wearing a Russian uniform and grew angrier as they argued about who's to blame for the war. Get him the heck out of here, he told his soldiers. Rub him out. Kill him, damn it. That's your entire order. Get him over there, rub him out, shoot him. The soldiers didn't shoot him there. Instead, he was separated from the other prisoners and taken to an armored personnel carrier. A month later, I found the rebels' family and showed them the tape. They hadn't heard from their son Murat in months. His mother Fatima watched and was left speechless. Russian forces captured the Chechen capital in the days after Murat's detention and interest in the war in Chechnya faded. I too moved on. But Fatima, the rebel's mother, didn't. Five years, ten months later, I caught up with her in Moscow to learn that she'd spent the entire time looking for her son. I did practically all of it on foot. I had calluses on my feet because I was always walking from one village to the next. Fatima's first stop, a prison in Chechnya, where many of the detainees had been taken. I spent three months never leaving the front gates. Once in a while, they'd let prisoners out, and I talked to them to get information. When that yielded nothing, she went on to look for Murat in one of Chechnya's mass graves in the village of Komsomolskaya. I knew I didn't have much hope of finding him there because most of the dead had been killed in fighting that took place after his surrender. But you know how they say anything's possible in war. I thought maybe they would have dumped his body. As the war raged on, she also formed a network with other mothers looking for their missing sons. All of the mothers who were looking for their sons traded pictures and information. If I went to one village, they'd go to another. Everybody in Chechnya probably has a picture of my son. She found another mother's son, but not her own. Nobody else found Murat either. Now she's appealed to the European Court for Human Rights. Unfortunately, Fatima's case is a very typical one in Chechnya. There are um, literally, literally um, hundreds and thousands of people that have disappeared since, the, since 1999. Um, what is particular about this case is the very strong evidence that we have in it, that we have a film of, him being, of her son being detained, and that we also have a film of a Russian general ordering him executed. I declare open the public hearing in the case of Bazorkina against Russia. Fatima's case was heard in the international court's chambers in Strasbourg, France. The first case ever to be heard about a disappearance in Chechnya. It could take the court three months to deliberate, but Fatima is used to waiting and watching over and over again the video of her son's detention. I tried to identify the soldiers. I even found the general, but I couldn't get him to see me. I also found one of the guys that was standing next to the bus. That's why I watch it, but it's really painful. Even today, when I watch after so much time has passed, it hurts. General Alexander Baranov, the man seen on the tape sending Marat off to be shot, went on to receive the Hero of Russia award and be promoted. He's now in charge of all forces in the Russian region that includes Chechnya. Fatima says she'll never give up. You can make peace with everything, but not with losing your child. It's frightening. There's nothing more than not knowing what happened to your child. Burying him would be easier. Ryan Chilcote, CNN, Moscow.